Welcome to Book Talks, the show that speaks to education, health, entrepreneurship, and so, so much more. Welcome, Zanzi, to yet another uplifting episode of Book Talks. I am your host, Botale Panaluma Tati Dabani. And today in studio, we have Sisi Pogazi. Sisi Pogazi, welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you doing today? Okay, thanks. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Sisi Pogazi, what inspired you to have a career in the media industry? And what kind of work do you do at the MDDA? Oh, I was inspired by um, a teacher. I love writing, so I decided to pursue a career in journalism, which led to the work I do with the MDDA. Um, so, when you said you did journalism, what kind of work did you do in journalism before? Okay, I worked for um, a newspaper in Cape Town, where I'm from. Um, post that, then I went to Nemisa to do to study further in, in radio production, which led to my employment within government. So I started at the Department of International Relations, Communications, then eventually at the MDDA. Okay. What is the MDDA and what is the objective of the MDDA? Okay, MDDA is a government agency reporting to the minister in the presidency. Uh, it's been in existence since 2003. And our, the agency's key mandate is to provide support and um, diversify the media um, sector through grant funding to community media um, organizations like your community print, which is community newspapers, small commercial print, community radio stations, as well as community television stations. That is our main mandate, to diversify the sector as through the South African history. Um, post, before 1994, um, ordinary South Africans didn't have access to, to media and didn't have these kinds of, of, of platforms we have now. So that is our main mandate. How important is the how important it is it to promote media development in South Africa and how does the MDDA do that? It's important because uh, the South African constitution is clear on media freedom, freedom of expression, and the MDDA's role is to, is to ensure that all South Africans, doesn't matter the race or color, have access to this platform so that they express they express themselves through their own languages or are able to listen and get information through their own languages, able to write and also have this wherever they are in South Africa, whether we are in a rural village or in a township somewhere in deep Limpopo, you are able to have access to, to these platforms. Okay. Then how does the MDDA contribute to media development in like full context? Because the media is changing and people don't really know how important your role is? Okay, MDDA, um, since its formation, we, we've been working closely with an other stakeholders within government, like your ICASA, which regulates the media sector, com broadcasting sector. So the importance of MDDA is to, to, is to ensure that um, um, there's diversity in the media sector. So we work closely with ICASA. ICASA issues licenses to broadcasters. And in our case, we support community broadcasters. So as soon as they get a license from ICASA, whether it's for community TV or community radio, then they come to MDDA to apply for grant funding so that they are able to achieve their mandates. How important is diversity in media? It's very important because um, during our days, we are unable to, to really have community media platforms where mm -hmm. we come from. We are able to go and volunteer or even um, um, work and, and write in your own language mm -hmm. or broadcast in your own language. You're, the closest you will have will be a public broadcaster where you are able to tune into Mshabo as an as an example. But right now, it's just walking distance from your house to a community radio station where you are able to to get the information you need um, um, through those platforms. Same as with the mandate of the GSI, as we are able to also um, disperse the information to our ordinary South Africans in their languages of their own through these community broadcasters or community newspapers. Mm -hmm. Then how do you guys engage with community media organizations? Because you did mention that you guys work with them. 
So what we, we, we are mandated to do is to provide financial and non-financial support to the community media sector, whether it's community broadcasting or community newspapers. That is, that is our mandate, and we do this on an annual basis. Okay. Um, recently, uh, the applications for the funding have closed, mm -hmm. and um, I think that many people may have missed it, many people being organizations. How have you guys ensured that people don't miss the next application process for next year? Okay, since um, 2021, um, we do not take applica grant application on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. It's an annual call around the same period. So between May, June, every year, we open the call for applications to community newspapers, small commercial newspapers, or community broadcasters, which means community radio stations or community television stations to apply. And we do uh, publicize this in, in, in our platforms as well as many other platforms that we are affiliated to. If any organization then misses the call, we then oh, we open it annually. So if you miss this year, around the same period um, next year, we'll open the call again. And we publicize in most platforms, including MDDA social media platforms. Okay. Then what is the process in between the applications that close on the 28th? Right, and so I believe you guys are going to be done appro uh, approving the applications. So, what is the process after and between the period of June to October 2024? Okay, so we've closed the, the call on the 28th of, of June, and since then we are currently busy with compliance. So, mm -hmm. compliance means an example if you are a community radio station, we will then we'll check with ECASA if you are complying with, with your license conditions. We check with the Department of Social Development's NPO Directorate. If you are registered as, a, as an NPO, are you in compliance with, with your cert certificate, uh, NPO certificate? So we also check many other things uh, because in our requirements, there's about nine for broadcasting and eight for, for print requirements that one needs to meet. So we check if you are complying with that. Post that then there's um, uh, board committee processes that one has to go through. So the first one is, is a bed committee where we request permission to go and assess the applicants on site, which means we go to all the applicants that have been um, deemed compliant and shortlisted, and we check against your application if what you have applied for is really what you need, mm -hmm. or you just you've just transacted the, the wish list that yeah. you submitted to the MDDA. Post that, we come back and present to the MDDA board and then it's the board in October that takes a final decision on who gets funded, who, mm. who doesn't get funded. But all applicants are issued with um, outcomes of application letters on if you are not funded, why are you not funded? If you are funded, how much are you funded for? Okay. Then what happens to the people who do not comply with the rules and the regulations that you guys have set up that have already been funded? Okay, if you don't if you if you are not successful, um, we do um, road shows um, when we open the call again and we educate the the sector on on the compliance as well as what one needs in order to comply so we do th that on an ongoing basis even if you are not funded uh, we have non-financial support where we continue the, the the education on on our processes as well as other processes that are done by our partners like your ICASA as well as the Department of Social Development you mentioned the non-financial uh, financial support that you guys offer. What mm. kind of financial offer is that? Okay, an example is um, uh, we provide trainings um, throughout the sector, whether we are funded or we are not funded by the MDDA. We have a unit that is responsible for research and training, and that unit then looks into our databases on and and looks at the common needs of, of the sector and come up with a training plan uh, we've just finished com technical training uh, for coastal uh, stations a month ago, and uh, that training focused on how to manage the studios that we fund, um, community radio stations, as well as community television stations. So our, our, our training is diverse. It varies from technical to generic training, like your governance training on how to manage those projects, financial training. We also have uh, digital training so, so that we move with the times as we are digitizing the sector. We also move with the time in terms of our training. How much has it changed digitally and have you guys gotten any challenges because technology is moving so rapidly? It, it has really moved fast as a, as a result. Um, 
there's a new unit that MDDA has, has created to focus on digitizing the sector. And uh, since um, um, 2021, we've, we've started doing that. And it's, 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 go, it's not going so well, but it, it, we are doing our best in on, ensuring that as, as we move towards digital migration, um, the sector is also ready to do that. Mm. Many voices are not heard in South Africa. And how have you guys implement, implemented to support local media outlets that probably have poor, you know, that are very disadvantaged and don't have the same, maybe if I could compare radio stations like LXFM, it's bigger, and there's probably one like Cosmo FM from like a smaller or a less known. How have you guys supported those less known community media outlets? Unfortunately, MDDA is unable to support um, a huge number of applicants in a year. Our annual performance plan target is 20 in a year in terms of broadcasting, how many we support, and we have a target of six for print. But outside that, we partner with a lot of other entities that have similar um, deliverables, and we then provide the support that is needed. Hence, I was saying our, our support is not just financial through the grant funding, it's also non-financial. Mm -hmm. There's so many opportunities um, that come and, and we partner with different mm -hmm. entities. We've just had uh, radio days with Prime, Prime Media where it's not necessarily the beneficiaries of our grant that participated there, but it's it's a different um, community media organizations that went through the master classes that we did with 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 Prime Media. So we we forge a lot of partnership because we are unable to do the work on our own. As we know that um, in, in in the country um, we have over two hundred licensed community public broadcasters. Unfortunately, as I said, we are only able to support uh, about twenty in a year. Then you talk about uh, you guys not only offering financial support. How important do you think, like the other support that you give, like trainings? How important do you think that is? Because people could misuse funds. So how do you think it is important for them to understand that financial funding is not the most important thing for them? So what happens after our grant approval process is in October by the MDDA board? We go through a very rigorous process of those that are approved for the financial support. We work with our legal unit and they are educated on the do's and don'ts of the grant funding. They go through a process with the, the, that we call grantee orientation workshop where they are educated by uh, various uh, stakeholders, even uh, projects that went through the process before. We'll also, we will also invite them to come and educate um, the new beneficiaries on, on what to do and what not to do during the grant funding period. Over and up above that, we also provide mentorship and guidance by allocating officers to make sure that during the grant finding period, each funded project has an officer that will handhold that project throughout the period of grant funding. Okay. So Spogazi, many of the youth now believe in searching for their for out for media organizations, organizations in general on social media. Mm -hmm. So can you just give us a social media handle so we can follow you? Do you guys have a website that people can go to online to read more about you guys? And possibly apply if ever they need to apply. Okay, so we have a very active website. Um, it's www.mdda.org.za. Most of our information is there. If you're looking for information on how to apply for funding, you just click on the tab grant funding. It will direct to whether you are looking for print information or broadcast information, the requirements on how to apply, and when the window opens again, that inf information is on the on the website. In terms of other opportunities that the agency um, has and that are open now and then, we have um, a, a Facebook page, um, it's MDDA, as well as Instagram page. Instagram page. Yeah. Yeah. thank you so much for coming to our show. Um, we are really enlightened and we will read more about you because I feel like there is more that you guys need to give us. So we'll just take that initiative. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invite. Mzanzi, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Vox Talks. Mzanzi, don't forget, Vuga Uzenzele, your future depends on you. Thank you. Thank you.